Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in my shop. Welcome. Mitch is behind the camera as usual. And we're going to work on some, some, some custom U-brakes. We started last week and we ended up with this shape right here. In the meantime, I worked on a second pair and they're basically done. And I finished my fork yesterday for my Romax and I tried the brake on and because the bar spacing is not quite the same, it doesn't work. So these really are a custom pair. They're only going to work on my bike and I won't be able to swap back and forth. So this U-brake is on the back and I spent quite a bit of time, well, not that much, but some time figuring out where the pad should go before I drilled the hole. And even though I was very careful to make the pad work because there is a geometry. You see how there's an arc and and the more that the, that the the arm goes into the rim you can see how the pad is raising up so to make this work I got to have it at the top of the slot even though I was very careful. Now let's go over to my fork and I'll show you what's going on there. So here's the fork and I didn't, I tried to get the spacing uh, the same as on, on my, on my frame because then I just make the exact same brake. But that didn't actually happen. It's a little closer. It's four mil closer and four mil apparently makes a lot of difference. What happened is I got 27.5 rims and you can see how where the boss mounts. <clears throat> It's on, it's at the start of the curve where, where the blade is starting to curve for the unicrown. So that's why it ended up a little closer. So this, this mark is where the hole was drilled on the other, on the other boss. And what I did here, I took a piece of wood because it's too hard to put this in with the bolt there. This is, is 14 millimeters, which is the same as the pad so I can put it in and you can see what's going on here because the boss is in on my on my rear brake that's where the pad goes it's not going to work so what I need to do is to, to go over to the mill and I got to take a cut off here and that's good because I got a lot of material here and I'll probably take a cut at a slight angle like that and then we'll come back over here and we'll see how my wooden pad fits. So this is the, it's the steel bushing, I'll call it. It's not a bearing, but it's a bushing. When I put that in, it joins these so that they're identical. Okay, so that's a lot better like, like that because, because now the a geometry looks a lot better. There's, I've got more room in here and the line here is, is basically, it, it's perpendicular to the axle. So that's going to work. So I'm going to make some marks because what we'll do now is to drill the hole, the hole for the pad. So it's not quite at a right angle, but that's okay. Because now we know where the middle is. So that's where I'm gonna drill my hole right there. And it's gonna be in the middle. Okay, so there goes the center hole. Okay, so why don't we do the pocket now? There's gonna be a pocket where the where the where the back of the brake pad goes into there's two washers and a nut that's our two pockets oh look at that Okay, so the hole is in the middle. We still have to put in a slot. So 100 thou down and 100 thou up, but that's looking good right there. So happy with that. 
I've got to narrow the arms down because they're too fat here. So I think what I'll do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark a line along there and then we'll go back in the mill and we'll take off, off some material. I just want a nice curve in there. I don't want to mill the steel, so I'm going to raise up the cutter a few thou. And then that edge gets milled off anyway because it gets narrower. I think what we'll do is to put the rotary table on here and we're going to thin down each of these sections. One, two, three. And these two are a, a little deeper than what happens here. I'll show you. I've got to match that radius there because that is, that radius there is the size that I want. So uh, I've got a ball end mill that's going to come around. It's going to match up to that right there, that radius. So what I was looking for here, can you see this? Can you see how this radius matches that? That line on the top is continuous, there's no step. That's what I was hoping to get. So on this one, I'm gonna go from here to here. Okay, go around like that. So that's what it looks like. We've milled around the boss here. We've got a nice circle. And after I do the other one, then we have to mill this down. Don't have a CNC, so this is all manual. Just got a half inch end mill hill here, nothing fancy. We're going to mill this surface here down to that level. Okay, so we have to have to mill this down, but this is a lot longer and it's not as 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 thick so it's probably going to vibrate so i'm going to put a little sort of like a little jack under here i'll show you that this is what i have all it is is a, a piece of ready rod a nut got welded on i found this in my box so it's, it's not like i just made it and it happens to fit perfectly so it goes under like that and it supports it i just use my hands it puts a little bit of pressure on there and so that's not gonna vibrate. Put some oil on there. That's cutting oil, it's not lubricating oil. It's still tight, it's okay. It sounded like it was vibrating a bit more. What a good fit. 
So see those, see these marks here? I'm gonna show you how to take out those marks, make it all smooth. I've got the arm mounted up on a, a piece of steel. I've got my high speed grinder. I've got a spiral roll. This one's worn and that's what I want because I'm gonna use the very nose of it. And I'll show you how I, I blend that in. I could do it by hand, but this is just, if I'm careful, this is easier and faster. So let's have a go. So if I take a little bit of, of 180 paper, and if I spend a few minutes there, I won't do it all now, but you can see how it'll all polish out. It'll get quite smooth in there and you won't be able to tell the transition. Because what I'm doing today, I'm just going for the shape. I'm not gonna, I don't have the time to make it all smooth and shiny in the space of this video. So we're just doing the shape. There we go. So I think what we'll do now is to, I'll put the vise back in the mill. We're gonna mill this down. This, see that lump there? That lump has to go flush with that radius there. So once we do that, then we can do those hollowed out bits on the top there, make it look nice. Not exact, that's basically what's gonna come off. This just gives me a little bit of a guideline when I'm setting up. That's all. I'm going to eyeball that, that red line. And according to my eyeball, that looks pretty good. see it's, it's at the same height basically. I'm going to file a small radius right here where these two meet. I don't want it to be sharp and then we'll mark out where the pockets go. Got a small file. This file is a little bit finer. And then a little bit of used emery cloth. And I want to take off, just take off the burr. So I keep it on the flat raise it up very slightly it's just a little trick so then i'll make a mark because this is this is where we're going to use use the ball end mill to go to it's just nice if everything is consistent eighth inch aluminum because it's hard to clamp this in the vise when this, this piece sticks out. So that goes like that. So it's the same. I'm just using my finger. I can feel it raised up a little bit here and a little bit there. So that's good. And just to take a little bit of weight off, give it a little bit of style. It's a quarter inch end mill and it is carbide, but it's also a little bit flexy in a sense. So if I go too fast, It'll flex the end mill, so I'm just taking a nice light cut. On my last cut, I just take five thou, five thou more. There you go. I like ball end mills. They can do a really nice job sometimes. I took a small cut off here that was 88,000, so I also have to take a cut off here. 
because if I measure this one, I'm on zero, and this one here is 90 thou, there you go, 88 thou. So on the slot, I always, always measure from the top. So if this is the wrong height, I'll get the slot in the wrong spot. And then that slot won't line up with the other slot. Because these two, these two levers, when, they, when they're on the posts, on the frame, these two slots are perfectly in line. So we want to do the same. So we'll, we'll set this up, we'll just mill off 88 thou, and then we'll do the slot. You see how this is about three inches long? So when I mill that, it's going to vibrate. So one way I can fix that, see I've got a wedge, it's aluminum wedge I've had forever. I don't even know where it came from. If I put that under there, and then I put a C-clamp there, it's not gonna vibrate, because it's held up. It's sort of like the little jack that I used. Where the slot starts is a little bit over center. So that's where the slot is going to come from, right, right there. So that's where the slot's going to go to. It's really handy having something I can copy. Because as you know, I have no drawing. I'm just winging it. So that's what the slot is going to look like and it's going to be curved slightly. So if I line up the cutter with that, that's going to give me what I want. What I'm doing here is I've got my line and there was a reason why I did that line is because I'm going to match up the line as well as I can with the cutter. I think that's pretty good right there. Okay, so I can, I can spin the cutter because it's just freewheeling. And then I raise the table. Hear it? Just touching. I lower the cutter 236,000. That's my calculation. So how I get the 236, if you're wondering, half the thickness of the piece and half the thickness of the cutter. I add them up and that's how much I raise the table or lower the cutter. So it's just simple math. And so the slot, slot comes up to the up to where the ball and mill ended and looks like it's in the middle so we're good. We'll cut slots here and then we'll put the rotary table back on and we've got some other operations to do and we'll put a nice radius on the end there. I'm just making a rectangle basically. I'm slowly going large until I get the right size. It should go in and slide back and forth. So there we go. It does fit. I can do a little bit more on the mill here in the vise. I can I can shape this end here because that's not obviously that's not finished. Let's work on this and then we'll put on the rotary table and we'll do some more of the operations. I think we're going to come out to about there and then we'll cut around. Yeah, that turned out smooth. That's what it looks like. 
I've got the rotary table. I, I got the I got the chuck mounted on top. It's hard to put a, any sort of a, a stop here. So what I've got is a, a magnetic base, and I can put that like that because I'm 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 going to machine a curve here, and when I lock that, that's my stop. So I'm using a, a magnetic base as a stop. So now I'll change the tool and we'll, we'll cut that radius there. On this operation, I'm using a boring head and then I've got a tool out of the lathe. So it's a square bit and a round hole, but it's got two set screws, so it worked fine. So it's gonna make a, a radius of whatever that is. It's two and a half inches or something like that. So I want this to be matched to that top radius right there. Okay, that's just clearing it. And that looks okay right there. I stop the cutter and then I, I lift it up because if I just raise it up, it's going to make marks like a spiral going up the cut. So then I got to do extra sanding. So that's why I stop the cutter like that fast. I think what we'll do next is to, is to mill the radius on the end. That worked out nicely. So you can see it's a nice, it just needs a little bit of a file right on the edge because there's a little bit of a bump at the transition, but small file, emery cloth, that'll be good. Can you see how there's a bump there? There's a, there's a bump. We need to make it smooth from the middle of that radius out to here. So that's just a cut, but we'll hold it on that holder through the bushing. I'm watching for little slivers to come off. Right, okay, there, there it goes. Okay, so there's my line. It's a little, a little bit off, but that's a, that's a nice transition there. I, I don't, if I run my finger over there, I can't feel any lump or bump. So that's nice. So we'll do the other one, then we'll move on to the, under the pocket. So the pocket will begin right there. And then we'll come up about an eighth of an inch right there. So we have to center drill. I got a 5 16 center drill. Then we're going to drill 5 16 down to the right depth, about eighth of an inch. And then we'll use an end mill and we'll do a little, little pocket, sort of like how we did here, except it's a smaller end mill. Like that, and then it'll come down something like that. And something like that. It's just to save a bit of weight. Add a little bit of style. Now I take this off again. I'm setting the depth now. This is the height of the underneath of the U-brake arm. So that's my zero. And now I go up, I'll go up 145 thou right there. So that's my zero. So that's my zero.
I'm just watching the digital readout because because I can't see what's going on underneath all those chips. So let's have a look. Okay. So now you can see underneath. So I'll, I'll, put, I'll add some oil. Add cutting oil. And then I'll do one, one final pass and then this one's done. It looks like a pocket to me. And that's how we make U-brake arms in my shop. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos lately and I've seen some really excellent craftsmanship and then I've also ventured in, into the dark world of huge angle grinders, massive sparks and stick welding. It's quite the contrast. One thing that really stands out though is that in most of these videos nobody's talking, nobody is explaining the process of making something. I think that's important. So if you like what we do here in my shop, you can support us. You could buy us coffee. Mitch and I both like really good coffee and if you look below there's a link. If you click on see more you'll find the coffee link. Thank you very much. Have a great week. Stay safe.